12 workplace trends to expect in 2023. This was a article that I came across. Uh, in, it was written in December of 2022, and I figured it'd be interesting to kind of go through and see uh, if any of these 12 workplace trends in 2023 are things that we're still feeling, things that we're still experiencing in our workplace, and seeing like what is uh, going on and, and, and kind of reading through it. So let's just jump right into it. The workplace trends we witnessed today have irreversibly changed nearly three years on from the start of everything that happened in 2020 and 2021. Uh, but in the face of strong economic headwinds and ongoing geopolitical disruptions, it's clear that the new status quo is not static. Well, and even in that first sentence, I would tell you like that was completely accurate. And I still feel like that is the case uh, even uh, today in April of 2023. As we enter a new year going into that 2023 year new approaches to work and retention as well as technological changes like the increasing out of adoption of artificial intelligence and advanced data analytics will drive continued changes to the most prevalent workplace trends um yeah i mean yes yeah, slow over time i don't know i mean there's a there's a couple different areas that we have seen uh change due to ai but it, it still has not really hit massively to the market, at least in my opinion, I don't know, maybe, what do you guys think? Maybe I'm missing something, but I mean, I remember there was a big article about like a McDonald's opening that um, was completely unstaffed and there was no staff members in the front end. They're still in the kitchen section, but in the front end, it was all like you go up to talk to a giant, almost like tablet screen and you click buttons on it and place your order and then it comes out on a conveyor belt. I don't know if that would count with the adoption of artificial intelligence. Uh, but um, there's that kind of a trend and people are still worried to this day of what that was going to do to a lot of the work, uh, you know, people in that in that group or in that uh, field of work, how they were going to be affected by that and the ongoing changes. And, you know, a lot of those uh, most of the McDonald's that you see are, are not are um, franchisees and franchises that have to um, that have to buy into the company and so uh something like that to remodel like that particular mcdonald's that was making headwind i can't remember where it was at or making headlines i can't remember where it was at but it was uh built to be that way so imagine like as a franchisee you own a mcdonald's and you have the option to implement something like that and you know probably setting it up in the hallway or in the lobby just as a separate option from uh, going to the counter is probably going to be something that takes place, but to completely remodel your McDonald's to do that, you know, shutting it down and remodeling it, all that kind of stuff, uh, that's probably not, you know, going to take place for a long time. That's probably going to take a change over a long period of time in order to implement it. But needless to say, I don't want to get off topic. That was a total rabbit rabbit trail, and uh, you know, um, and that's just something that came to my mind as I read that adoption of artificial intelligence and all that stuff and, and advanced, just advanced technology in general. And the, the trend of that taking place is still going to take a very long time to implement. And as we jump into this chat GPT wild, wild west days that we're in kind of similar to the era of the beginning of YouTube and the era of the beginning of the internet, uh, I don't think people still have fully understood what this is. The only thing that I've seen on my personal end, and this is anecdotal, is I seen I saw one job for a marketing company that was posted, and they were hiring someone who was, um, you know, very very talented or would be considered quote an expert at communicating with ChatGPT. So I thought that was interesting. They were hiring someone specifically for the role of talking to ChatGPT. So there's probably someone that they would use to bounce ideas off of and and all that kind of stuff. Very interesting role. But um, anyways, so workplace trends. 2023 ongoing hiring and retention challenges while the peak of the so-called great resignation is likely well behind us workers in the u.s continue to leave their jobs at higher than usual rates in october 2022 4 million americans quit their jobs leaving 10.3 million positions open the gap between the number of people seeking work and the number of open roles remains wide meaning that effective hiring and employee retention tactics remain highly important uh, the fact that this trend has persisted well past the end of most blank restrictions and into a more challenging economic environment points to a deeper set of drivers behind employees' choices. Uh, the World Economic Forum notes that the problem is especially ac acute in lower paying jobs and industries. That's what I was waiting for. Yep, that's, um, I, I, yeah, that trend is still happening. Uh, 
in part because employees are no longer willing to accept many of the conditions that were standard before the pandemic. And unfortunately, in a lot of those sectors too, um, it's hard for them to do anything about some of those conditions uh, because it's just the nature of the job itself and what it what it requires. And so, uh, yeah, we've seen a massive change in that. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I've wondered, I've often wondered if it was uh, partly because of like personal uh, like opinion and just like the area that I live in. I live in a very small town. And so um, it, small, it doesn't feel small, but small relative to the size of regular large cities. Like just a couple of years ago, I was living in a, in a large city, very, very large city uh, in scale. And um, I didn't notice it as much in the larger city on scale, but being in a small town, there's been a lot of uh, local stuff like chains, you know, like Walmart uh, here that it's it's a completely different experience and they are seriously lacking in workforce and they admit it. It's, it's very well known. I mean, there's ads up everywhere that they're hiring and it's just they can't find people. And if you go in and you're trying to get through the checkout or whatever, you can. I mean, it's just it's it's a nightmare if you go there at the wrong times. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's because we're in a small town, or maybe it affects and hits different here than it would any other place. I mean, we have self checkout and all that stuff, and it still happens. So um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm curious to see what you guys are uh, seeing on that part. It's often a key motivator for develop. Uh, uh, so it says, yeah, turnover also remains high in professional managerial positions, where a lack of advancement opportunities is often a key motivator for departing employees. I would also say with managers, I read another article. I can't remember which one it was where. Uh, with managers, it's also the way, like the stress that they were bearing, the load they were bearing and what it was forcing them to do to the people that they were managing and the environment for that. Like they, you know, no one, a lot of people go into that role and they don't want to have to be the bad guy, but their upper management was forcing that. And they were like, I'm done with this crap. I don't need to deal with this. And they walked out. Um, and so I've seen this. I have a lot of guys, uh, a lot of friends of mine that work in big corporate offices um, for massive, massive companies. And the the way that they're handling the turnover that they experience with managers is a lot of them aren't even hiring the manager back or hiring that manager position back, which some of my friends are upset because they were gunning for the job. Um, instead, uh, they have just chosen to merge departments. And uh, mostly, he says, now they just work on their own. So... That's an interesting trend, uh, specifically with one person I'm thinking of. Uh, number two, a focus on flexibility. Remote work is no longer a pan blah, 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 driven necess necessity, but as companies enter 2023, many will continue to experiment with different forms of remote and hybrid working, or at least some flexibility. Um, I have just done a video and an article talking about this, a focus on flexibility. I will uh, link it uh, so you guys can check that one out. Um, but yeah, I think this is something that has continued and will remain. To, it will will continue, you know, onwards. And I don't think this is changing. I don't think this is going away. If your organization can do flexibility with schedule, um, then uh, you will uh, have to do that just to survive. A new survey by um, Amdia. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Found that 48% of the workforce will continue to work remotely or in a hybrid fashion, though questions about the future of work remain. While 54% of the survey's respondents believe work from home has increased productivity, companies like Tesla have made news for requiring all employees to return to the office. And I think personally, and I could be wrong about this, I think that it depends on the workplace culture and where you're working at. I think a lot of that will be affected. I think that um, I'll, you know your workplace culture and 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 the culture you've built around your company and also the needs of the work itself. I think all of that will play a role and if that continues and what that looks like in the future. Um, I don't think that that's something that you could really easily, I think it's too muddy to gauge um, how it works. Cause I even know of like churches and their staff and even churches. I know some churches that had their their staff come back and then they're working in the office again. And I know some that just leave that they tell their people to work from home. So I think it is very, very big. It's, it's based on the culture locally within the company itself and the needs of the work. Um, so it's been interesting, but there's other ways to be flexible though. Like there's other things that this company like test, you know, this company like Tesla, I know what Tesla is, but sorry, that was dumb. But there's, there's other ways that like Tesla and can, 
in like impart flexibility so it, it still feels like they're not being such a curmudgeon in a world where technology has advanced so much that it's like we can do things differently here um, as employers and employees test a range of approaches to hybrid remote work companies will need to take employee feedback and concerns into careful consideration to avoid retention backlash 100 percent, we've seen that already with demand high for remote positions, flexible flexible work policies may also offer a strong recruitment tool for organizations. Yep, you guys should check out, I won't talk too much on this, we just did a video, but you guys should check out my other video where we talk about that. That is definitely, definitely a reality that we're seeing, and we're seeing it pretty widespread. Um, I'm seeing more and more of it, especially not so much on the, you know, work from home as much as like just these, these interesting schedules that companies are undertaking to try and uh, maintain retention or, or maintain, yeah, keep their retention rates high. So a prioritization of employee well-being. Companies have increasingly been focusing on work-life balance and the mental health of employees, and this will continue as one of the key workplace trends of 2023. I think personally, I wish that more of this was the case. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, I think they're coming to understand that they need to make sure that if they if they come to a place where they're trying to encourage staff to seek uh, help and be healthy, both mentally, physically, all that kind of stuff, um, the the work becomes a better place. I think a lot of this, though, you know, according to Indeed Research, 90% of people believe that how we feel at work matters. Yes, yet only 49% feel their organization is focused on measuring and improving well-being. Yeah, and I think too, it's not intention like they're not a lot a lot of cases they it's not that they're trying to be um or they're intentionally like you know dismissing this but it's culture it's culture in the office um it's culture in the workplace and what a lot of people don't understand is you cannot create culture you can only be culture and uh, meaning that you have to be the culture that you want to experience in that place and i'm and a lot of that st starts at the top the very top and so if you're one of those people that's at the top of your organization you you need to be the culture in that organization the healthy culture that, that you need to come in there and represent it and be it and, and embody it in full and it will bleed out from you um but you know a lot of these places it's not so much like oh well, we're going to talk about we're family well a lot of that times that doesn't work especially when you don't act like it you have to be it and um you know that's hard for people to do this this section sucks i've left positions over this um and uh, i can t i totally feel for someone who's experiencing this i mean that's it's 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 difficult so if that's you comment below uh, i'd love to hear what your would you how you think this is this is an interesting one prioritization of employee well-being man this is taking longer than we thought here so <laughs> we gotta we gotta roll um all right four is talent sort shortages and widening skill gaps skills gaps i've seen this on an anecdotal level uh, like I said, we live in a small town, and uh, and so there's always been uh, a need for specified talents and specified skills that we can't find. Um, can I honestly say it's even more so since all the stuff that happened in 2020 and 2021? Um, I wouldn't be able to honestly answer that. I've heard through the grapevine of other people that have lived here either their whole lives or a very long time that it has increased even more but uh we never know hiring is already difficult in this labor market but many organizations are also challenged by severe talent sor shortages in critical areas i will tell you even in this in the, in the organization i'm currently working in very small staff under 10 the two positions that i've had to hire on for i had to hire someone with that i could recognize talents in them based on what they were doing and saying and then i had to train them specifically in those two roles and show them how to do it like I couldn't, I did, I did not have the ability to go out and just hire someone who already knew how to do the job. I specifically had to train the person to show them how to do the job. And, you know, I was, it was better off for it. Like I had to do that and it's been much better. They're more appreciative because they're learning something new and it's challenging and they're excited to do it. Um, and it, you know, it also built culture. Like I know them really well and it made it very sticky. Like, Hey, you're going to stay here now because you, you know, we're, we're very close and everything's working. The pay's uh, good enough for you and you enjoy the work. Um, so it did help in a lot of ways. And you know, here you see, like, here you go to address these shortages. Savvy companies will work to broaden and improve their upskilling, uh, and reskilling efforts in 2023. And I think that's, that's gotta happen. Now that was on a small company, very, very small company that I'm working with. And so, I wonder what that would look like for a major corporation. I mean, they're going to be forced to do that. 
uh, you're not going to be able to address every specific need and it's only going to get harder. Uh, it's kind of like a micro dirty jobs type situation where it's like you have all these very specific niches and industries um, and no one's going to school to learn it. And so there's a there's a gap. And then what happens is, is companies wind up having to pay more to fill it. Um, the way we were able to work around it, like I said, is I um, interviewed uh, candidates, potential candidates for the job and recognize skills within them and was able to call that out of them and teach them and lift them up to be that that person and you know so they, they got paid a little bit more which was great for them and also they learned a new skill which is even more fun they're more excited uh, so it worked out really well I don't know how tangible that is across the board so that'd be interesting to hear uh, what you guys are, are seeing on that so a continued focus on skills over jobs uh, historically, many employees remained in fairly similar roles for their entire careers. Today, the pace of technolo technolo technological gosh, f forgive me, and economic change means the average worker might need to frequently reskill and upskill and even change jobs to, pres to preserve their opportunities for growth and advancement. Uh, yeah, I mean, that sucks um, if they have to change jobs often i mean i've experienced that i've had to change jobs quite a bit just because you kind of hit a wall you know oh well so and so has been here for 20 plus years and they ain't going anywhere anytime soon i'm like okay well then you know that doesn't work for me so um you know because i'm not going to sit here for 10 years waiting <laughs> i mean that's just kind of what it is you know uh, that's that yeah there's there's a lot that goes into that hiring in this environment should be focused on what specific skills employees bring to the table rather than their previous roles yeah I mean, you know, it plays, it goes both ways. It plays a lot like you, your previous roles and the skills that you bring to the table um, and how you performed in those previous roles. I mean, that's, that's always been the make or break um, for me getting, you know, promoted or anything like that. So many of the most valuable skills in today's economy, like data analysis can be applied to a number of different roles in 2023. More companies are likely to look to alternative credential programs like short courses or certificates when hiring to increase their spending on in-house upskilling efforts yeah and a lot of, i've seen a lot of organizations that have started their own certification programs to train their own staff coming in that are interested um, in order to address the fact that they can't find people with the skills uh, that they're looking for on the front end and so uh, that's something to take note of you know if, if you're uh, trying to you know be that person then going out and actively seeking what that skill is and learning it may be the the way for you to go but um, I've, I've heard a lot of people comment on the last video that the working environment in and of itself and the nature of the company takes on you know how you know they that culture that that affects a lot of this and so you know a lot of a lot of employees won't even bother to learn um the skills that they're trying to teach that they're not even interested in learning it because they're not even interested in really working at the company they're secretly wanting to leave and they're looking for other jobs in other places so uh, that probably plays a huge role in all of this uh, leaders recognize that focusing on upskilling employees and career pathing can help their organizations close skills gaps yeah very interesting. Um, I won't go any further for now. I think the video has gone on long enough. 18 minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you guys here uh, that that long. And so, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Maybe I'll do a follow up uh, if you guys want to. Um, the like uh, the other five uh, points on here uh, because it is an interesting uh, situation, you know. And and I don't know. Um, are we still seeing these trends? Eh, somewhat. I mean. You know, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I, I'm interested to see because these trends are, these. you know, this is something they were predicting in December. Now we're about almost midway through, uh, uh, um, yeah, very getting very close, creeping up on being halfway through the year 2023. So do we, are we seeing these trends? Are we seeing this stuff? And would, would you agree? Are, what do you think is causing the trends now of the people that aren't coming back to work? How is that affecting your local uh, job market and do you think it's going to change or do you think it's going to get better I, I think there are some companies that are responding the right way and i think there are some companies that are burying themselves in the sand and they're not acknowledging what's going on and they're going to continue to have employee shortages um, but some of them it's like you walk in the door and you're like i don't even know what you would need to do to fix this like the the the, the culture and everything is so bad it's like i don't even know how you could possibly repair this because it would take a massive overhauling of like people and you know like 
your belief system and the whole thing in the culture within the workplace itself like it's like you would have to purge yourself of a ton of people in order to change just the horrible way you guys are doing things I, unfortunately i feel like that's the case for a lot of people so all right went way too long on this uh please like share comment subscribe all that stuff really helps the channel thank you guys for the growth that we're seeing that's amazing i'm really appreciative of it i will catch you guys in the next one